Well, we've given it a name, but not online. You're gonna, it's going to be debuted here on your channel. Where the cameras are looking into each other and like <laughs> one audience is watching and the other audience is watching. And if you're an audience of both channels, then you're watching both at the same time. It's really it's, weird. He's going to stay with us tonight. Yeah, that's right. You guys want him for your farm? <laughs> Work, won't you? Oh, there's a smile. Yeah, there's a idea. smile for Uncle Nate. Look at that. <laughs> Hi there, folks. I'm Sean the Modern Yeoman, and today I'd, talk, I'd like to talk a little bit about lessons. Lesson number one, if you're going to harvest a 47-pound turkey, you're going to need a container large enough to scald that turkey. A couple weeks ago, we harvested one of our tom turkeys. We used this sink to scald him after we had dispatched him. It wasn't big enough, and certainly the pot that we used for processing chickens was definitely not big enough, but this thing wasn't big enough either. I thought it would be. So what did we do? We got something bigger. Check it out. This quote unquote burn barrel we got for $15 and it actually holds water. It was refurbished. Um, and basically refurbished meaning that it was just cleaned up from whatever, whatever was in it before. Uh, we're just going to fill it with water halfway, um, boil that water with probably a propane burner and dip the turkey inside of it once we've processed him. This will make that process a lot easier. We had a lot of lessons that we learned when we did our first tom turkey, and this was the primary one, that we need something big enough to scald the turkey in, and this will definitely fit the bill. Lesson number two, pigs. Pigs are agents of destruction and chaos, especially when they're fully grown. This area right here, we moved them here two weeks ago. All the destruction that you see on the and they got shocked by the fence. The fence is working, that's good. All the destruction that you see here, all this ripped up land is from two weeks of these pigs being on it. They are far more destructive than we bargained for. Now they're down here in the woods. This is fine. We set aside this land for pigs. They're clearing the land, but they can't stay here much longer. Otherwise they'll utterly destroy everything. I don't know how long it will take for greens to grow back in this uh, understory of the forest. So I actually ended up getting another panel, net panel that I'm gonna use to quarantine them so I can easily move them far more frequently. I probably need at at this stage at this uh, rate of growth where they're at I need to move them probably once a week down here in the woods just so they don't utterly destroy the land like they're doing here after two weeks of being here. When something doesn't go the way I want it to both on the homestead and in life itself I can either get down about that get sad about that feel discouraged by that or I can learn the lesson tweak what I need to tweak and apply it for the next time. Anyways, we're about to go hang out with our friends, the Kramers, so if you guys wanna come along, let's go. So we're at the Kramers, and I have made friends with Winston, believe it or not. This is Winston over here. We've hung out, but I think me getting close to the chickens, there's chickens behind me. Winston's being a good guard dog, and he's protecting me. I'm a strange man that he's not very used to, and so he's protecting his, his animals. And so, for that, Winston, I commend you, my friend. Good boy. Good boy. As you guys know, my friend, Nate Kramer, has decided to let us hang out with him today on the Kramer stead, on the Kramer farm. Yeah, we still haven't named our farm. You guys need to do that soon. I know, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying the Kramer stead, the Kramer farm, but I think most of my viewers are also viewers of these guys, so I'm sure you guys have been keeping up with them, but there's going to be a special announcement in this video, I think. Yes, right? that's right. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Uh, but for now, there's some new things on the Kramer stead going on, right? There's a lot of new things. There's a few new things. There's a few new things. So right now we're just walking around. One of the things that I had a very deep burning question about, you guys remember earlier this year, we gave our rooster Lucky to the Kramers. Lucky, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. He, he traveled over the, the rooster rainbow bridge, um, <laughs> but he's left quite the legacy behind, yes, right? He he's had several. I think he has eight, seven or eight. Seven or eight progeny. Yes. Uh, s most of them are hens, but there's one rooster. One rooster. And I want to meet Lucky's 
only son. son. His name is Richard. His name is Richard. And so <laughs> Nate is going to introduce me to Richard here. Yeah, now, there's two roosters funny. on the farm. Yes. Sir Crows a there's lot. Sir, there's Sir Crows a lot, which yep. there's Sir Crows a lot <laughs> right there. I'll show you guys. But there's also Lucky's son, Richard, who and I'm everything. very... He's just right behind him. We're about to go meet him. Let's go <laughs> check him out. So right here, we're looking at Sir Crows a lot, yeah, right? Sir Crows a lot, yes. Okay, Sir Crows a lot. He does crow a lot. Yes. And he's a beautiful bird. Now, he's a BF elder. A BF elder that the folks from Permapastures Farm right. gifted to you, Billy, and, Billy William. and William. Brought him over, yep. And he, I've heard really good things about BF elders, <gasps> that they're very gentle. Is that true? Is that, would you say that's true? That uh, he's good with humans? Everybody but me. Okay. No, no, no. Let me say that again. He's good with me. He's not good with everybody else. He will attack you. Okay, which he's, he's like a fighter, like our rooster fighter, yes. which is kind of a, a good trait to see. He's protective. Um, <laughs> so, needless to say, he's. Would you say he's the alpha rooster? Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. He's kind of the boss rooster around these parts, but you'll look behind uh, Sir Crow's lot and you'll see a lot of these. What's the What's the breed? Well, they, so uh, they are. Uh, what is this? Um, what was Lucky? Lucky was a Brahma. Brahma, thank Brahma. you. Yeah, so they are Brahma and something else. Mm -hmm. Not exactly sure. Lucky was the Brahma. Yes. So you'll note that these chickens around here, they have all those markings of our dear departed friend Lucky right there. And so these are Lucky's daughters here. Now, Lucky's son, Richard, Right there, yep. the black the big, one. The big guy. And he, I, he's comparable to <laughs> Sir Crows a lot. He's bigger than Sir Crows a lot. He's bigger than Sir Crows a lot. Um, so this is Lucky's son. He doesn't really look as much like Lucky does because his mom was. Uh, once you have so many chickens, you begin I, to forget what I don't know who they are. Uh, Katie might know, but I don't know which one the mom it was. Is. It was one of the. One Noir, of the, one of the original, original eight. Eight Kramer hens. Kramer hens. So that is Lucky Sun right there. And I'm just privileged to be in his vicinity. I'm going to see how close I can get to him. Probably not very close. There's Sir Crows a lot. Which Sir Crows a lot's keeping an eye on me. Hey, buddy. Hey, Richard. What a beautiful rooster you are. Look at you. And you got your gals, which are your sisters, really. Those are your sisters. What do you think, Winston? Huh? So it's special for me because Lucky was a special bird and he lived in an amazing place here in the Kramerstead. And when he passed, it was sad, but we knew one of the cool things was that he had all of these, all of these sons and daughters, well, one son and all these daughters that are still living their best life here on the Kramerstead. So Lucky, like I said, he's passed on, uh, but his progeny, his legacy is here at the Kramer homestead. and. I couldn't be happy. It, it just makes me really pleased to see them all walking around here on the homestead. So, again, most of you folks keep up with the course and you know that there's a new LGD in town. It's not just Winston, who I've shown on video. There's a new fella here who's there. And I don't think you guys have officially announced the name of this new not. fellow. We have not introduced nor given a name. Well, we've given a name, but not online. You're gonna, it's going to be debuted here on your channel. So we are going to debut. Well, so first of all, meet our new friend here. So this little guy, before I give the name, uh, he's very shy, obviously. He is an Anatolian shepherd. Hi, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Winston wants in on and this. A great, <laughs> and a great Pyrenees. Uh -huh. Hi there. We think there might be a, a small mix of something else in him, but primarily those two breeds. Uh, I think he's now six months, six and a half months old. Mm -hmm. So he's lots of growing to Beautiful do. Beautiful dog. Uh, he's not going to get quite as big as this handsome fellow because their paws are not nearly as big. <laughs> Oh, you don't say. But we got him. Come here. Oh, come here. Come on. He's doing his job. He's barking at this strange man. So, I'll tell you his name here. Levi, come on. 
Come here, Levi. Come Levi. Here. Oh. Levi. Oh. Levi. Oh. Levi the dog, <laughs> Winston's the dog. brother. Oh. Oh. We got Levi because after Floyd passed, uh, this boy here, Winston, didn't have a playmate anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's an outside dog, and we felt so bad that he didn't have somebody to spend the day with, spend the evening with. Uh, because when, when we had Floyd, he and Floyd would play a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, plus, as a guardian dog, we want them to be able to guard in packs. Yes. They're much more effective with more than one, you know, two or more. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we figured having two livestock guardian dogs would be good for the farm and for Winston and for, for Levi. So you guys heard it here first. The new pup on the Kramer homestead, Levi. Levi is a little standoffish right now, but it... It portends good things because he's already got a very firm instinct to protect his land. And I'm a strange person. He's never seen me before. He's never met me. And he's very wary about this strange man walking around. Even though it's with his dad, who he knows very well, he's still very wary. So, yes, he's a little standoffish right now, but uh, he's at home. And he's doing his job he's doing already. His job. He's on the clock right now. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nate, thank you for introducing all of us sure. to Levi. And stay tuned to their channel because I'm sure you guys are going to be... At, at some point, we'll make yeah. an announcement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Part of the beauty of double teaming a That's YouTube. Right. What, is it, what, <laughs> a is it, YouTube what is it called when we have two YouTubers doing a video at the same time? It's like Inception or something like that? It's, it, there's a term. There's a YouTubeception term that we came up with where the cameras are looking into each other and like one audience is watching and the other audience is watching. And if you're an audience of both channels then you're watching both at the same time it's really it's weird really so one of the things i wanted to bring up and talk about as viewers of both of these channels know you guys both nate and i we live in east tennessee and generally the weather is i'd say fairly mild in this part of the country oh, yeah. uh, so. winters are generally fairly mild snow never sticks on the ground occasionally it'll go below freezing but that's fairly rare mm -hmm. however Starting next week, the week of Christmas, things yep. are about to get wild. Really, really cold. So temperature shows, or the weather forecast shows, starting the 22nd through the 25th, I think. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get down to like eight degrees, six degrees in the evening, and no more than 20 or so degrees in the day. Polar temperatures. Yeah, like that's cold. In where we both live, we live roughly about an hour or so from each other. Where we both live, it's going to be this, the same temperature. So I didn't realize this, that it's going to be that cold until Nate told me today. And I'm like, oh man, I better get on the ball and start prepping <laughs> for my pigs and yeah. my chickens. What are you doing to yeah. prep Let's for... Let's walk over there. I'll show, you, okay. I'll show you kind of what I started when you showed up. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're doing is making sure that they have shelter and warmth. Okay. To the best that we can. So chickens, um, pigs, sheep. Chickens, pigs, and sheep, and the mm -hmm. dogs. Yep. And ourselves and the humans. Yes. So I just went over to my neighbors and I grabbed a bunch of hay. Mm -hmm. So this hay right here is actually feeding hay. Yeah. This will go to the sheep. Okay. Uh, because we want to make sure that we overfeed them because if they have enough energy to burn, they Calories, can Calories, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to go back to their barn and pick up all of the stuff that's fallen on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use that as deep bedding. Yes. So we're going to do deep bedding for the sheep mm -hmm. and for the pigs. Uh, for the pigs, I'm going to take their two shelters. I'm going to put them together to make mm -hmm. one big shelter. So there's a windbreak in all sides. Okay. And then put deep bedding in there so they can snuggle up. Yes. Each other, right? Yep. Uh, for the sheep, I think they'll be fine. I mean, they have their hair. Yes. Right? It's, uh, where they're at now, back there, underneath the easy up. Yes. That's a really nice wind block. Yes. Uh, so I think they'll be fine. Plenty of food, deep bedding water is going to be the issue and yeah. then for the chickens it's the same thing we're going to button up their um their coop lots of deep bedding in there mm -hmm. and then we'll close them up at night we're going to put all of the chickens into one coop okay so all of that body warmth will keep them yes they'll be fine yeah. birds you see birds that live outside in the winter right and they're birds right. they have all that down they have all those feathers yeah and when there's multiple birds exactly. they'll keep each other warm right. at night yep okay yeah that's so. good to know okay so i think the primary takeaway that I'm getting and the, the big ingredient for dealing with this ultra cold snap is going to be, hey, it's going to be deep bedding. Deep bedding and lots of food. 
deep bedding, lots of food, the calories and all that deep bedding, which I have lots of food for the, the animals at home and I do have lots of hay. Between those two ingredients, I think they'll be okay. Also trying to windbreak them as much as possible. Yep. The pigs will be easier because they're down in kind of the valley of okay. our homestead and they've got all the woods there. Yeah. The and chickens you, might be a little more challenging. Yeah, um, but you could also bring all of those back into your barn too. That's true. I could bring the pigs back up in the barn. Even the chickens, you can put them and in And the one chickens, of the stalls I can put them in one of the stalls, to. yes. So, and okay. Then, and then for the dogs, for us, yes. um, we will, I think what we're gonna do is actually put them into the room where I'm putting all the hay. Okay. So I think I'm gonna put them Let's into walk the, in here if you don't mind. So I think I'm gonna put them, the camera to adjust. I think we're going to put their their bed in here. Okay. They have a cot that they'll sleep in. And then I'm debating whether or not I put in a uh, ceramic heater in here. Okay. A non-flammable, right, just a, a source of heat that will add a little bit of warmth in here just to kind of elevate it a yeah. little bit. I might put a little insulation up, up in the rafters. Sure. Just to kind of keep some of that. But, you know, these will be nice insulating for the wall. Uh, keep them out of the rain, keep them out of the, the wind. And during the day, it'll be, I, I'd imagine, up in the 20s or 30s. Uh, it's never going to get, uh, it's not going to get above freezing for three days straight. Good night. Yeah, okay. So it's going to be, so water for us is going to be the big That's issue. That's going to be a big issue for me as well, mm -hmm. is just making sure I'm constantly replenishing their water. Yep. Okay. You hanging out with Uncle Nate there, bub? Yeah. He is. Yeah. What do you think? He's going to stay with us tonight. Yeah, that's right. You guys want him for your farm? <laughs> Holly's like, no. We'll put, you to, we'll put you to good work. I'll put him to work, won't you? Oh, there's a smile. Yeah, a smile for Uncle Nate. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's such a sweetie. Well, we're saying goodbye to the Kramer life for today. Thanks for hanging out. Just for now. Not, this is not goodbye. This is not goodbye. This is see, see you later, later, as right. my high school yearbook said. <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye, Henry, who's now asleep. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for showing me your plans for dealing with the cold weather. Yeah. We'll see if it works. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Until we see you guys next time, remember, slowly, as slowly. always, slowly, slowly. slowly. <laughs>